Hey everyone, Ryan Young, Comic Jiu Jitsu. I hope you're doing well. Let's cover a topic about Jiu Jitsu, but from a little different angle this time. Let's go over Jiu Jitsu as being a martial art or a martial science. Which is it? Before we get into it, what is Kama Jiu Jitsu? So, Kama Jiu Jitsu is the Gracie Jiu Jitsu firm that's uh, created and founded and run by Master Dave Kama. Master Dave Kama is Hicks and Gracie's contribution to the Dirty Dozen. Well, one of two, the other being Chris Saunders. And Dave Kama is thought of as possibly the best black belt that Hicks and Gracie's ever produced. Anyway, he runs three academies, one in Irvine in Southern California, one in the Dallas area in Flower Mound, and one in Austin, Texas. So come visit us at any one of the three academies. We'd love to have you here. Back to the subject at hand. I'm just gonna grab a seat here. Is Jiu Jitsu a martial art or a martial science? Well, you know, that kind of depends because we've always known Jiu Jitsu and Judo, Karate, all this stuff as martial arts, you know, arts that are, that are helping us to, or that, that we use in the fighting arts, right? Martial meaning fighting or military or something like that. But I don't really know, but close enough, right? <laughs> but the thing is, you know, you cannot do the art without doing the science because the science is what you need to be able to understand in order to do the art. So let's kind of just go back to an artist. You know, an artist, you know, you, you see the finished product, right? An artist, like a painter, like a Rembrandt or a, or a Michelangelo. But you don't see the work that went involved to creating that art. So as an example, you know, a lot of these arts, they're from like the, the artists, they're like from the Renaissance times and stuff. And they studied directly under a master. You know, they came in as an apprentice. A lot of them came in as children, let's say four years old. Kind of like a lot of kids are teaching, are learning jujitsu now. But these kids come in and they're not artists at the beginning. They're not even necessarily trained to be artists at that point in time. A lot of times they're just doing errands. Errands such as, oh, you know, here's my palette with the paint on it, go and clean it off. Or I need a new palette, I'm gonna be doing this other, paint and, uh, uh, this other painting and I need you to mix these colors for me. So they have to mix the pigments and you have to know, they have to know the ratios and they have to know how to do it. Like if you know, if you put one, one chemical with another chemical, you could have a bad thing, right? So they learn all this kind of stuff as they're an apprentice. Then they have to learn stuff like how to set the canvas up, you know, how to choose the material, how to cut it, how to put it on the, on the frame, and you know, to what degree of tightness. All this stuff, you do develop a feel for it over time, but you have to understand the properties of it, which is kind of scientific. So now let's go back to our journey in jujitsu. We like to think of it as an art, because it kind of is. But before it could be an art with you, you have to understand the technicality, the philosophy, and the concepts. Those are all scientific, right? What, what happens when you, when you block somebody's blood flow path, right? They pass out, right? How to revive them if they pass out or what to do or what not to do. You know, what if you end up popping a joint or something? Do you ice it? Do you not ice it? You know, do you go to the doctor? When do you go to the doctor? When is, an, when is a hurt or an ache or a pain actually an injury? You need to know this kind of stuff, or if you don't, you really should. But even if we look at the curriculum, you know, our curriculum is methodology based. It's not art, it's not what you feel, it's what you do, right? Step one, step two, step three. That's scientific, right? When you're in your science class and you're doing an experiment, you follow directions and it's step one, do this, step two, do this. That's really what jujitsu is at the very beginning. So if you're white belt, blue belt, purple belt, that's pretty much what it is. Think of it as kind of climbing a mountain, you know, white, blue, purple, and that's kind of like the top of the, you know, middle through purple, that's like the top of the scientific portion of jujitsu. And once you know the curriculum, once you've gone through it, your body can do it without even thinking, then you start going, you know, the scientific part starts going down, and then you start progressing into the art section. That's where you become, you can flow more with it. That's where your body automatically does something without you having to think, oh, what position am I in? Is this cross side one, cross side two? Hmm, okay, oh, he just moved. Oh, that's knee on the belly. Oh, he just moved again. Oh, that's mount, right? And where do my hands go when he's mounted on me? 
you know, these are stuff that it, it's just, it's defined. You know, you have to know this kind of stuff to be successful. But once you've gotten through, like I say, deep in a purple belt, this stuff you don't have to think about anymore. Your body automatically knows and makes the appro appropriate adjustments for you to get out of the bad situation, get into a good situation, and once you're in that good situation, how to finish. That becomes art. So you start off science, you become art. So for you who are still relatively new in jujitsu and you think to yourself, man, I just can't get it. How about you work on your left brain for a bit so that you can get the understanding of jujitsu, the concepts, the techniques, all that kind of stuff like I mentioned. And once you fill up your left brain, have it work into your right brain. What a lot of times we do is, you know, if we just teach it and we don't teach you a methodology, we just teach you a little bit today, a little bit today, you don't know how to chain it up because you don't understand the relationship of everything. It cannot just be a right brain activity. Well, I guess it can, but it's a lot easier if you involve your whole brain. Prior to my approaching jujitsu in this way, I just did everything from a left brain side. I knew it all, but I did not know how to make the art part work because to me, it was just it, right? I didn't understand that I need to take different parts of my brain into it. And when I was younger, I was very left brain, very logical and, and no understanding of feel. But as time has gone on in my jujitsu journey and I've learned how to feel something, Right? I know this is cross-eyed too, but for some reason, the technique that I've learned to get out is not working. Well, the reason is because his weight is in a different spot. I need to feel that. Once I feel it, now I'm like, oh, okay. I get my hands in the right spot, but I feel his weight is in a different spot than normal, and that's how I can do my escape. I learned that from Dave. Right? Dave is very much a feel-type jiu-jitsu person. Right? But that's because of the years and the decades he's been doing it, and that's the way Hickson taught him. Right? I had trouble learning from Hickson. I'll admit it, you know, when I was a, a blue and purple belt, when I was at Hickson School, I had trouble learning from him a lot of times because he's a feel guy. He'll say, he'll do something, and he'll say, okay, do like me. Well, what did you do? And instead of explaining to me, he'd say, here, let me do it again. He'll do it, and he'll say, okay, do it like I did. It was very difficult for me. But Dave, on the other hand, would learn perfectly that way. Hickson would do it, Dave would go, oh, and then he'd do it. What helped me with Dave was that Dave could then explain it to me. Ryan, do this, do this, do this. You need to do it this way because, right? So he'd, he'd, he'd appeal to my left brain, and eventually as my left brain got it all figured out, I could now create a bridge between the two so that I could now transfer my jujitsu to the right brain. So that's my transformation or journey from going from the science side to the art side. And that's what you need to do. So for those of you who might be having a little bit difficult issue learning jujitsu, try to think of it a little bit differently. Don't think in field terms yet. Think in science terms. If you can get yourself to think about the science part of it, then you can do the feel part of it. That's why for me, writing jujitsu down, you know, for myself, writing something down, it doesn't work for me anymore because I understand the relationships of all the positions, the concepts, the techniques. I understand why something works. I can look at it and I can say, okay, well, I know why that works. But now, for me, it's all about feel. And eventually you'll get there, but don't really rush it at this point, right? Just work on learning everything. Don't pick a game to do, do all the games. Learn all the games of jiu-jitsu. You know, the, the top game, the bottom game, the fast game, the slow game, the heavy game, the connected game, right? Learn all those games. And what'll happen is your body, once you understand it all, will then start to put the pieces together automatically. Because your brain on the left side has a good knowledge of it and it's gonna start passing it over to the right. Eventually what'll happen is, the transfer of information from one side of your brain to the other will become very efficient. And that's what you want to work for. But remember, things happen in stages. So try not to rush things. Take your time and make sure you learn all the concepts. Hopefully this kind of worked for you. So be sure, if you think this will help other people, please share the video. 
Otherwise, if you're not gonna share it, at least subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell right next to the subscribe word so that you can be notified of when we have other videos coming your way. That's all I got for you. Take care. Happy training. Bye-bye now.